Today we're going to talk about something a bit different from my usual vlog on this channel. We're going to talk about this baby right here. This is the Apple MacBook Pro 2021 M1 Max. We're going to talk about it especially in terms of video editing. Stay tuned. I welcome you to yet another video. Thanks for tuning in. If you landed on my channel for the first time, my name is Mamware. I've been video editing for almost, well, more than 20 years, I'm afraid to say. And uh, professionally, I've been doing it for 15 years. So I tried a few machines and I was very curious to test this out and actually purchase one for myself. So the first thing you have to do, you know it, hit the subscribe button right now. For more tutorials, more tips, more video making videos in general, for specific subjects I'm gonna cover in the video, check the description tab down here, where you will also find the links of the products I'm mentioning during the vlog. So for the past six years, I've been using another MacBook Pro that was from 2015. I don't remember exactly the specs, but it was definitely a 16 gigabytes RAM computer with uh, 512 gigs in terms of hard drive and don't remember how many cores i think it was eight cores anyway it was getting old the fan was too noisy because it was very dirty i found out the computer was struggling especially for 4k files and with the new technology in terms of codecs and formats for videos and also the battery died it literally, it literally just poof so i had to replace it and uh, i've been using it as a backup computer right now so I got the 14 inches MacBook Pro M1 Max. And if you're asking why I chose the 14 instead of the 16 inches, first of all, I like to travel light. As a video maker and video editor, I usually travel with my camera gear and my computer in the same bag when I can or trolley, whatever. So I really need everything to be compact and portable. 16 inches, I had a 17 inches way back in time it was literally too heavy too big to handle and since then i purchased 12 13 or 14 inches computers and they're just the best in terms of portability that's the first reason second reason also because i pushed all the features almost all the features on the 14 inches and i could match the specs of the 16. so this is a tinier computer compared to the 16 but not less mighty we're going to talk about some of the overall features then we're going to get into the actual performance of the computer in terms of video editing so stay tuned we're going to talk about the dimensions and the weight the MacBook Pro 14 inches measures in terms of height 1.55 centimeters, 31.26 centimeters in terms of width and depth is 22.12 centimeters. The weight 1.6 kilos. That's why again you want to go for the 14 because when you carry this stuff all day your back is going to say thank you. Let's talk about the specs inside the computer now, how powerful it is. I pushed everything I could possibly push and the chip I got here is the Apple M1 Max with 10 core CPU and 32 core in terms of GPU, 16 core of neural engine. Memory RAM is 64 gigabytes so again the highest I could possibly go to speed up the process of video editing and workflow in general. I kept the original storage of 512 gigabytes because I usually work with external hard drives, that's my workflow, but you can push the hard drive to one terabyte, two terabyte, four and eight as well. Let's talk about the price, something I don't wanna talk about, but I'm sure you're interested. For this computer with these specs, I spent 3,399 British pounds. I know it's a lot of money, but that's what I do for a living. Definitely worth investing in something like that. We're gonna talk about the most important thing now, which is the video editing on this machine. I want to mention that I'm using Premiere Pro by Adobe in terms of video editing software and all the Adobe Cloud, so After Effects, Photoshop, Lightroom, and so on. That's how I tested the new computer. By using a Blackmagic, I usually film in B-RAW, which is the RAW file, the RAW codec, on the Blackmagic, which is the best codec ever invented, in my opinion. Apart from that, 
I record usually in 4K 60 frames per second, but I'm gonna show you a video filmed in 6K with the 6K Pro camera, still by Blackmagic. Even with my old computer, I never had any issue with the B-roll files, even in 4K 60 frames per second or Full HD. Uh, 120. You can see the timeline is a 6K timeline. I'm playing the video in full resolution right there. So you can see the files have been filmed in 6K, 24 frames per second. There's not drop frames whatsoever. And there's also a color grading layer on top of each clip. It just flows. So that's what you want from your machine when you're video editing. But with my old computer, I always had issues with the GoPro codec, why? And also with the DJI, when I was filming in 4K, 60 frames per second, my computer couldn't handle those files, but in particular the GoPro, that was terrible. Especially when I was recording 120 frames per second, 240 frames per second in Full HD, it wasn't even 4K or anything. It was just so slow, I couldn't work with it. So I show you now a couple of clips First one in Premiere Pro, that's it, this is Joe skating, this has been filmed in 4K, 60 frames per second, this is played in full resolution and it's playing fine right now, so not drop frames either, no jittering, it just works. This one is another clip from Hero 10, GoPro Hero 10, again filmed in 4K, 60 frames per second, but played in QuickTime and once again nothing really drops, so good news for myself. I'm gonna show you this clip filmed on the GoPro Hero 8 at 120 frames per second in full HD, which was struggling again on my old machine, and now uh, there you go, it just flows again, not drop frames. Now let's talk about DJI, I recorded these clips on the Mavic Air, I'm gonna show you this clip filmed at 60 frames per second in 4K in Premiere Pro, okay? So that's, that didn't work very well. So the computer still was struggling, as you can see, it's jittery and it doesn't flow at all. So this is full resolution. I wasn't very impressed with that one. I'm gonna show you the same clip, but played in half resolution, as you can see right there. And it just works fine. So. With this type of codex, you want to play, unfortunately, um, without resolution. That's not a big deal anyway, it still works. So most of the clips you've seen were MP4. Now, I exported some graphics, my graphic intro you've seen before, in ProRes.mov. So that's a 4K graphic and that didn't play again well on my timeline in Premiere Pro and nothing is really happening. It's not even showing the graphic. It just went too slow and uh, I'm playing half resolution as well. So yeah, that's something to keep in mind. I'm not sure if it's the Apple ProRes.mov or whatever, I'm not sure. Something I wanted to test as well where my machine was struggling before, my old machine, was the masking, especially when I was playing with the opacity, rotoscoping, that kind of stuff. This clip here has been filmed in 6K again, and uh, it plays fine. It still has some delays when I create the key points and when I move the key points frame by frame. So not as um, in real time, but definitely better than, than before. Well, it's, it's okay, it's not too much, you know, it doesn't take that much time, but there's still a bit of delay. Dynamic links. If you're a video editor and you work with graphics as well, you know what that is. It's basically when you create a clip in Premiere Pro and then you want to modify this clip in After Effects, maybe with some effects, with some graphics and so on. So whatever you do in After Effects, it will be mirrored in Premiere Pro in real, in real time, possibly. My computer, my old computer was struggling, of course, and this is what happens on this machine. Bear in mind, these are 4K files, 60 frames per second, and you will see this is not a rendered timeline yet. So the red line has not been rendered, and that's when the computer struggled. But when I actually rendered out the timeline, which for 10 seconds of render took, um, I don't know, 10 seconds maybe that long. 
you can see it here. Finally, the clip worked out even with the 4K files in 60 frames by DJI that we've seen before. Boom, no problem, no dropped frames. I wanted to talk about the export time because that really matters in your workflow as a video editor when you have different projects that come in, you know, on different timing, you want to be quick and you, you want to hit the deadline. I exported a 15 minutes video in 6K uh, again, some clips at 60 frames per second, but the computer exported that file in 17 minutes. My old machine would probably have taken two, three hours or more, I think. This is definitely, again, a good investment for my time. And also copying files from Thunderbolt 4 to my computer, I copied 275 gigabytes of footage from a hard drive to the desktop and it took one hour. I would have probably taken overnight with my old machine. Time is money, what would you do? So what about the graphics in Premiere Pro, the essential graphics? I'm gonna show you this screen grab. I basically created a complete graphic package in Premiere Pro through the essential graphics and that's actually a course that you can go and check on Udemy go and uh, yeah check it out if you need the graphic package for your youtube videos or professional videos there's a lot of stuff in there and my old computer was really struggling to create and play graphics created in premiere pro you can see here i'm playing back in full resolution in full hd and uh, the graphic is just flowing i created an end board so even if you're creating a course if that's something you want to do definitely recommend a more powerful machine. So these are the tests I done for myself, but also for you guys, I hope they helped out. Important feature for video editors, it's the sound. I usually don't use the internal speakers of the computer because I've got two monitors that I connect externally and that's the way it should be done. But still you can video edit, of course, without any problem with the speakers, which are actually great they feature six speakers with force cancelling woofers, which means they can eliminate unwanted vibrations. It's hard to describe it without really um, making you listening to it, but it's really wide. It's like a Dolby surround, if you know what I mean. When you watch a film, it's really engaging. It really seems like the sound is coming from different directions. I, I love it. In terms of display and resolution, again, important for uh, video making, video editing and color grading and as such. I got the 14 inches, as I mentioned, it's a Liquid Retina XDR display, which is extreme dynamic range. It's 14.2 diagonal inches and the resolution is 3024 pixels by 1964. Uh, native at 254 pixels per inch. The battery life, gosh, definitely better than my old computer. This can run up to 17 hours when the battery is fully charged. I still haven't tested the battery as I'm actually video editing, so definitely that will reduce the battery life because you're using more tasks of the computer. The fan, it's completely quiet. I can't even hear it. The only time I heard the fan going crazy is when I was exporting the file I was telling you before in 6K. That's when, again, it went, it went quite loud as a fan from a Mac could be. But again, it depends on how many tasks you are doing at the same time. Talking about the ports and the multi-ports of the MacBook Pro, it comes with SDC XC card slot. So you can insert your SD card directly into the machine. You don't need a reader. If you're using that on your video camera, photo camera, it's great. You save a lot of time. There's a full HDMI port to connect displays, external displays, if you wanted to. And as a video editor, I definitely recommend to use at least two monitors anyway. Then it comes with a MagSafe 3 port, which is to charge and to connect your laptop to the electricity. There's three Thunderbolt 4 USB-C ports with a support for charging. So you can charge also the laptop through the Thunderbolt. Through the display port, you can connect up to three 
external displays. Also, you can use different adapters and connectors like VGAs, uh, the bigger HDMIs, more HDMIs, and so on. I wanted to share with you also the multi-port dock I purchased because, as mentioned before, I've got thousands of different hard drives, so I need more ports to connect my monitors. I usually work with two external monitors, apart from the MacBook Pro monitor, and a lot of different hard drives. So for this multi-port dock, you can find the link in the description tab. I've got three USB-C 3 ports, two USB 2 ports, USB-C power charging port, USB-C data transfer port, SD and micro SD card readers, and 3.5 mic audio uh, input. A lot of things there, definitely recommend to get another one if your workflow is similar to mine. What I can share with you so far, I've been using that Mac for literally 20 days now. I'm happy with it. The, I haven't found any issues yet. Only Premiere crashed twice or three times, but probably it's a Premiere problem, not a Mac. And for video editing, I couldn't get better, I think, from Mac, from, from, the, from Apple. I've been using Apple for years and I don't want to switch to Windows again anytime soon. So that's the most powerful machine I could get with these dimensions and weight. A lot of techy stuff today, and uh, but I hope it's gonna help you out. And uh, I think that's what I wanted to cover, but let me know down in the comment tabs if you have any question, anything related to video editing, video making. I thank you for watching. Consider to subscribe, actually subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.